Hello, faithful, and welcome to a new episode here of Heaven's Metal Streaming Radio here on YouTube. I'm your host, Kevin Crothers. Hey, I'm glad you chose to come hang out with me. This is a band that we're going to talk about in a top 10 songs, and I know I kind of said it in an earlier video, probably won't have too many more of these for a while, but I really wanted, have kind of wanted to do this one for a long time. And I really just had to plow back through the catalog and find those 10 tracks. Um, and again, we're talking about The Lead. Now, if you've tuned into this, you probably already know who The Lead are, and maybe you don't. So this might be new to you. Kind of in a nutshell, The Lead were a punk hardcore band that did kind of cross a little bit over into more metal territory in the later 80s. They released, I don't know, half a dozen different releases from EPs to uh, a couple of full albums, demos, some a couple of 7-inch singles. I actually had to go back through and go, what exactly do I still have by the lead? And I know I used to have the vinyl for the past behind, and I couldn't find it to show. I also had a cassette of that, too. So I kind of had to... Di and I, I do have a copy of Burn This Record on CD. But I'm in process, as you can still see, of getting this room done. And, uh, yeah, just kind of not happening right now. So we've got the Hardcore for Jesus. Uh, 1,000 units pressed by Retroactive back in, what, 2006. This has the lead five-song, four-song EP. It's got Return Fire, uh, which is, what, 16 tracks. It's also got Automolic, uh on e the e first vinyl EP. There's six songs there. Um, then you've got uh, The Pass Behind, as well as burn this record. Now there were several other, uh, and I have an e I do have a CD of the lead again, which is a four song EP they released in 2018. Um, but there's that, and Rocks put out the 30th anniversary for the past behind, uh, with a ton of bonus stuff on here as well. Anyway. Hardcore and punk with a few, a little bit of metal leanings at times. I mean, the lead played Cornerstone. They played CBGBs in New York, a famous punk hardcore venue uh, all along the East Coast. They're from Florida. You know, members of the band, of course, were Mr. Julio Ray on lead guitar or guitar and vocals. And then Nina and I, Nina. I'm gonna pronounce your last name, your last name wrong, which I believe is Lopez on bass and vocals. I know she's married, has children. I don't know. I don't believe she goes by the same last name now. Uh, Robbie Christie on drums, still banging the pots and pans. And Andy Doyle, who came in and played guitar on the last lead record uh, of the '80s, burn this record. Um, again, they released some 12 different releases from like 1985 through 2018, 2019. There have been a few other reissues. The Burn This Record was reissued uh, and remastered. I don't have that, but let's get on with things, shall we? Uh, coming in, and I'm going to pull a, we'll just call it, I'm going to pull a mulligan. Um, I have actually 11 songs here. And I got a tie for 10th place. So coming in a tie for 10th place off of Burn This Record, Suicide is a Lie. A crushing song. Nina's vocal 
you know, suicide is a lie. It's like, what are you, stupid? I just snarl. It's a lie. Great song. Love burning this record. Also tied for 10th place, going all the way back to the original EP from 1985, the lead EP. This song is called Get Out of My Face. Two extremes, as it were, you know, where they finished in the late 80s with that metal, hardcore, you know, thing. And then where they started, which was a much more punk uh, musical venture, you know, with Get Out of My Face. Coming in at number nine. This is off the pass behind. This song is called Tunnel Vision. A great hardcore tune, some metal edge leanings. Um, you know, originally the past behind, the lead had recorded the whole thing and released it on their th own three equals three equals one records. Then they were signed to REX, and so they re-recorded the whole album and re-released it. Covers different. It's it's very different sounding. I don't think it was just a remix. But uh, Tunnel Vision comes in there at number nine. Now, coming in at number eight, this track comes from Return Fire. Um, yeah, Kill Satan. <laughs> Julio provides the vocal, great intense lyrics. Um, you know, all of the leads material has always been very, you know, uh, you could say very, uh, very, uh, not your typical straightforward. It is, but it's very re relatable. It's not like you're up here trying to, oh, this is the perfect thing. It's like, no, they brought it down to the gutter where we all live and just made it very relatable. And, you know, the enemy trying to continually trick us, tempt us, push us into directions we don't necessarily want to go, or that little tap, because sometimes that's all we need. Kill Satan comes in at number eight. Coming in at number seven, this is also off of a release from 1986. They put out two releases that year. Uh, Return Fire had, what, 18, 16 songs? I believe it was a cassette-only release. But they also pressed vinyl for the next one, Automolic. This song is called XB. <laughs>
Now, when I first heard Automolic, that whole EP, um, I, I remember going into Dearborn's Bible Bookstore there in Hayward, California. I think I'd just gotten my job there or not, maybe not yet. And uh, my friend Sean Doty, who had been the manager, said, listen to that. And he was all a bit huge fan. I mean, Sean was more alternative, more punk, more hardcore in his musical like likings. I was always and have always been the metal guy who enjoys alternative. I dig good, good sounding punk to me. That's got that metal sound. Hardcore now is very different than what it was back then. Um, so XB, the vocals are really, and I, I, for some reason, I could be wrong, but I don't know if Julio sings the vocal or if it's actually Robbie, the drummer, who does the vocal on that. He wrote the song. Uh, XB comes in at number seven. Moving on to number six. This is off of 1989's Burn This Record with a very, very Slayer-esque internal pain. <laughs> When I first heard that song, wow, I thought, man, this sounds, it just totally reminds me of Slayer. The riff, the guitars, the driving, pounding, crushing metal inspiration, which is Internal Pain. Number six, Internal Pain from Burn This Record. Coming in at number five, and understand, man, this isn't, this is just my, you know, I'm picking ten great songs from the lead. The numbers are irrelevant, but I got to count it down, don't I? Coming in at number five, this is also off The Past Behind. He won't take a joke. Talking about Satan and the fact if in the occult, if you screw with that stuff and you end up rejecting Jesus, he Satan's not going to take a joke. It's not like, oh, I was just kidding, man. I didn't really mean it. There are a price to be paid. There is, uh, you know, without the blood of Jesus, without Christ, you know, hell awaits. He Won't Take a Joke comes in at number five. Coming in at number four, now this is going to surprise a lot of you because it's so high up on the list, but when this EP came out, man, I played it a lot. I really dug it, and I really thought one of the four songs really definitely needed to be in this top 10 or 11, as it were. Uh, again, Nina provides the vocal. This is off of, again... From 2018, this is Dressed in a Robe, Revelation 17. Much more, I, I, I would say, much more kind of alternative gothic. Still got that punk feel, as it were. But definitely 2018, not 1988. You know, a lot of things change in 30-plus years. Uh, and it, it, 
great stuff. I really do enjoy that EP. And if you don't have it, I believe you can still get that over at Rocks Records, uh, the Christian Metal Distro, or you can check out the Leeds Bandcamp. They do have a Bandcamp page, if I remember right. So, Dressed in a Robe comes in at number four. Coming in at number three, and I'm breaking another rule. I've always said no cover songs. But this is such a killer cover song. And I'm talking about the Leeds version of Resurrection Band's song, Alienated, comes in at number three. Love in your eyes, you can front the line. Double standard and the body style. My one million with your name. Share your kingdom and don't share your shame. What a great song. Le- Nina just provides great vocal. I love the, the loud, raunchy guitar. And you have to remember, in 86, in the Christian music world, in the Christian music world, going into a Bible bookstore, as it were, because you could get Automolic through Spring Arbor distributors, there was nothing else that sounded like this. There was nothing this raw, Nothing this loud. Reading the lyrics on Automolic, I thought I was in Berkeley, you know, uh, going through a copy of Maximum Rock and Roll, but with the same attitude, but from a Christian point of view. Simply amazing. Just putting it out there. But Rez, what a great song for the lead to cover. Alienated comes in at number three. This comes into the top, my top two lead songs. Coming in at number two is also from 1987's The Past Behind. Features Julio on the vocal. This song is called No Religion. Man, it's just a pile driver. Don't need no religion because I've got the Lord. Kind of lays it all out there. Um, You know, Julio went on after the lead, kind of called it a day there briefly. Formed a band called Frank's Enemy. Um, I've personally, I have never heard Frank's Enemy. Sorry, Julio. Sorry, guys, but I haven't. There's just so many other things, and it just is one of those things that there were so many things in the 90s that I kind of missed, but, you know, going back through and re-listening to all this stuff, it kind of, it is a flashback, but No Religion, a great track off of The Past Behind from 1987, which brings me to my number one song by the lead. Number one by the lead. This is off of the Automolic album, EP, six song EP as well and when I was listening to the EP the first time it was like I I never heard guitar again never heard guitars this loud this raw particularly with somebody belting out you know a, a a message like this I'm talking about calling out to you comes in at number one check it out
just an amazingly heavy, loud, raw track. You know, they definitely had shifted from a more punk vibe to a more hardcore type vibe. You know, some people would call a crossover. Eh, I guess. I don't know. It always struck me as more hardcore than anything else. But there you have it. Our top 10 songs for The Lead. And you can check them out. You can still find their stuff. Uh, there Again, there have been reissues. Uh, if you're interested, grab them, snag them. Check those guys out. They have a Bandcamp page that I believe Julio still monitors. And uh, with that, thanks for taking your time with us. Until next time, don't forget to say your prayers and God bless.